Detrimental, Detrimental Decay is easily, I'd say, my favorite song of the bunch out of all of them because this is one of those songs that was a perfect contrast where I feel like we have an equal amount of screams to clean vocals in here where it just works perfect. The intro riff, the yeah, that, um, well, me and John wrote that one together, and um, he was in my uh bedroom i was in the bathroom i came out i was like holy shit dude what is that that's really cool he's like i just wrote that i came out i was like that would be cool if i had like a major third harmony to that right pretty much went from there that one the uh, writing is a lot more balanced as opposed to tombstone where it was mostly me writing and forgive me where it was mostly him writing that was really a lot more of a team effort when it comes to like working off of jack and john's guitar parts uh do you find it fairly easy to like i guess like learning off of them because i know they're very much like oh here like look at this for a second and then they go back to playing with each other is it make it difficult to write your own parts or do you catch on pretty quickly i guess it seems like you do honestly it's not really that hard it's mainly just seeing what the root notes are then i build off that okay. so it's like i could keep it very simple just if i wanted to just, just going back and forth with but then doing. but i like to build off that with octaves and different things but no, that's awesome. The initial learning, it's just finding out what the root notes are, and there I just build it. And then how you add to that. That one, I was expecting it to be like, I wouldn't say a hardcore sound, but more of a shouty. Yeah. And the way you took it vocally, I was like, this is way better than I expected it to be. I would say that the chorus is so fucking powerful to me, and the scream parts just push that so much harder, where it just it, it just punches you out of nowhere after you're hearing the soaring chorus and it just fucking levels you and i love that feeling <laughs> and i love just the 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 piano parts we added behind this i think really um add and layer the song quite a bit Same thing with the harmonies we added on this with the vocals. Sending at that part. It does feel like that. <laughs> I don't know why that song makes me sad. Like for well, sure. It's, well, yeah, it's, yeah, because it's it's all about people I lost that like mm -hmm. I idolized. Yeah. When I wrote these lyrics, it had just happened when I had a lot of um, aspiring artists that I looked up to had died. Whether it be you know drug overdose, old age, otherwise, it's uh, it was something that always kind of hit hard for me whenever I lost someone that I looked up to. Whether it's Kurt Cobain or the lead singer of Death or it's the lead singer of Scary Kids Scaring Kids or The Rev from Avenged Sevenfold. Stuff like that's always hit hard for me because those are the kind of bands that, you know, pushed me to be an artist. Losing that person that you didn't even necessarily know personally that touched you in such a way with whatever their art was or whatever their music was. It's always hard because you know you're never going to have that feeling again where you're never going to have that genuine sound be portrayed in a new way by that person. It's a hard feeling to lose someone that you care about that inspired you in such a way. There's a lot of people like that in my life when it comes to music. This song is just a letter and ode to that feeling of loss of an idol, loss of someone that helped you through so much and they don't even know you. I honestly think that there's a different meaning to every song for every person in this band. Exactly, so, that song's meaning to me would probably be like growing as a person and finding yourself. Like, right. you gotta figure things out, become a bigger person and get better. And it explains like all the crap you'll go through in life. Mm -hmm. and, it, and how to pull you Yeah, out. and the thoughts I that go through that. your head. No, that's totally, yeah. I can totally see that.
When you have like parts on stage with like a, there, because there's a couple parts in these songs like detrimental and parts like that where you're shining the most, do, do they give you nerves on stage or is it more of an exciting thing for you to have that part like where it's your highlight? It might be more in between. It's not like I get nerves. It's not like I'm super excited for it. Right. Honestly, like those parts are kind of simple. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I show off a little bit, but I show off more with other parts that I've written and do that are more complex or yeah for sure but when it comes on stage i'm usually not worrying about how complex my parts are i'm usually moving around performing performing yeah. the breakdown's heavy as fuck not too long though that came from a pretty old demo of mine from maybe like four years ago mm -hmm. we started with a bass and then the guitars came in and admittedly that sounds a bit like a, a system of a down song a sweet beat which i probably haven't even didn't even hear at the time when i originally wrote that part Mm-hmm. But, you know. Detrimental's outro solo is easily some of John's best work as a solo guitarist when it comes to, you know, guitar solo. And then that goes back into the chorus really nicely and ends on maybe one of my best solos, I think. Exactly. 